Can I go for it? Okay. Steve Jurritson. Ah, yeah. yeah. So this particular vehicle, we, what we have now is the 2.0, so it's got the upgraded power electronics. Um, the differences between this one and our first year, which was 2008, we never made it 2009, are mostly interior stuff and cost, cost savings. Um, it does have the upgraded uh, specs, but it doesn't change the performance at all, just the smoothness of the ride and sort of the traction control so you don't get crazy on the roads because you do have a lot of power. Um, but most of the changes happened on the interior. The interior looks a lot different. Our original CEO thought that sports car drivers would want a stick shift, so we had a stick shift, but it was only forward, neutral, reverse. So mm -hmm. we got rid of that and put touch, touch buttons, made the seats a little bit more comfortable, um, and that kind of thing. So the Roadster was always intended to be sort of the car that makes electric cars sexy and fun to drive. Um, electric cars have a bad rap for not being able to go very far or, um, you know, just not having the distance or the top speed that combustion engines get, which is why when electric cars came out, preceded combustion cars, they never got very far. Combustion engines one um, because of things like distance. But now what Tesla has done is made a battery pack that actually gives you some decent range and a motor um, and partnered with Borg Warner who makes our, our single speed gearbox um, actually makes makes it fun and fast. So that's sort of the heart and soul of our company is our motor and, and battery pack. And the rest is pretty easy. This is one of the most mechanically simple cars you will ever see. I mean, no gas, no oil, no spark plugs, no alternators, nothing like that. It's, it's very, very simple inside. So I'm gonna give you a quick run through on, on the guts of the car. So you have um, your windshield wiper fluid, your AC unit. This also doubles uh, to pull air into your power electronics. Brakes, anti-lock brakes. This converts um, the volts coming out of the battery into usable 12 volt for the rest of the car. And that's about it in the front. Uh, in the back, we have all the good stuff. So back here is your actual battery pack. It goes to the back of the seats and all the way up to the bottom of the car. It has 6,831 lithium ion cells. <laughs> all wrapped in about 200 pounds of heating, cooling, and fire retardant protective. This is your power electronics module. It's actually your onboard charging system. So we put the charging system on board so that you can plug it into anything, a 220, a 110, or some sort of high power charger. It's because the charging system's on board. It just needs the electricity. Your motor is about right here, a foot down. It's only about the size of a large watermelon, weighs 115 pounds, and has one moving part. Um, it should last well precede the life of the car. It should last uh, around 400,000 miles. And then we have our, our single speed gearbox that's attached. Again, that one's made by Ford Warner. And that's sort of the guts of the car. So for this particular vehicle, we had to get it out quickly. So we rent spots on the Lotus line. Um, it's all Tesla. It's the only thing that this car shares with the Lotus Elise is the side mirrors and the front windshield. Um, but the rest is, is all Tesla motors. So we rent spots out there and they make them for us and then they ship them to our Menlo Park facility which is final assembly for us to put in all the power electronics. So um, the touch screen, the whole drivetrain basically. And so final assembly happens here in Menlo Park. And then each Tesla is custom made so we meet up with our, our customers, they put the deposit down that gets them into the owner's area on our website then they can take their time and really pick out their options. Um, usually a customer will take about three months just picking options on their cars. 
and then we make them for the customer and deliver them to them. Right now it's around three months um, from when you pay for your car to actually when you can get your car. So they're very much all handmade and all custom made. So when we came out with Roadster, we had a couple of goals. The very first goal, and our CEO made this clear, was one of the goals of, of Tesla is to motivate other car manufacturers to start building electric cars. Not only does the planet need it, um, but as other car manufacturers go that route, the society will become more comfortable with electric cars. Um, it was to get our name out there, it was to gain financing and um, consumer support and uh, help build the infrastructure to launch a mass-produced, um, less expensive vehicle sort of for the masses. So the Roadster has done its job. Um, it's here. It's actually a profitable line for us, which is great. You know, other car makers are, are going there, and we now have the infrastructure to build a mass-produced car. So the next one we have is the Model S, and that is uh, the, the four-door sedan. Uh, it has a lot of cargo space. It's very pretty. I've been in it once, uh, but our prototype costs a million dollars to make, so we very rarely actually let it out, unless it's a pretty high-profile marketing event. And then after Model S launch, we'll have something called um, Blue Star, which will be a, like a thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollars subcompact car. So that's sort of the progression that we're looking at. Um, these cars are, are extremely green. If you drive nicely, or when the EPA did their testing, they got two hundred and forty-four miles. You can get a little bit more than that. You can get a lot less than that, depending on on how you drive. Um, but what's kind of cool is the battery holds 53 kilowatt hours of storage max. That's equivalent to two and a half gallons of gas. So basically we're going roughly 244 miles on two and a half gallons of gas. So that speaks to the efficiency of the car. Um, it's extremely efficient in terms of energy usage and it's completely green. It has no tailpipe. So depending on where you get your energy from, this this is definitely the greenest way to go. Um, right now in the United States 50% of our, our energy is still still comes from burning coal. Um, in California it's only 20%. Except I think it's in Georgia I think that they have that big energy plant that, that's burning coal. Um, but if you actually get solar panels up on your roof, um, really the only carbon that you're making was to make the solar panels and to make the car, but after that you're driving completely green. Um, that's what most of our our customers do, and whether they buy them or they rent them. Usually if you rent the solar panels, the cost of your lease for the solar panels is less expensive than the cost of powering your house and paying for your electricity with your car combined. So that's good. It's pretty neat. You know, it's definitely an incentive to go completely green, which is really our goal. Good question.